Hey, Coach, what kind of challenge does Brees Hall present to you guys at running back this week? He's just a really physical runner. Um, doesn't necessarily hang his hat on anything uh, running running style wise. I uh, doesn't make a lot of sense, but some guys are bounce runners. Some guys are slash runners that always look to cut it back. He's a guy that does a little bit of both. Um, I think another challenge is is going to be uh, potentially the footing up there and and uh, you know being able to get body control enough uh, on that grass to to be able to have have enough control to play either either phase of that. But he's just a darn good player. Have you guys, uh, Courtney mentioned that too, have you guys done anything on the grass fields this week to try and simulate what you'll see up there? I've been on the grass every day this week. Um, and you don't know, it's not going to be the same, but I, I think our guys are comfortable with that. It's not something that's uh, all over our minds, but it's just something that we haven't done for a little while that we're going to have to get back to. I just wanted to ask about specifically your defensive line. It seems like that's been uh, at least one of the strengths on your defense. In what ways have they surprised you just as a unit this season? I don't know if they've su surprised me at all. I think that's probably what I anticipated heading into camp. We just got a lot of tough guys, a lot of hard workers. I think uh, what I've been pleased with, maybe not surprised by, but is the amount of guys that we're able to roll in there and and have success with. And, and, and you know, just looking at the defensive end spot in particular, we're rolling six guys in there consistently. Um, and you don't even know who's in there. I mean, those guys are, are – on any D and D in any situation, those guys are all in there and able to handle their business. And so to have that kind of depth, uh, I think is a, is a great luxury. Um, I think the durability that those guys have had, they've been uh, having to play a lot of snaps and they've been able to do it and, and do it at a high level uh, week in and week out. It's been fantastic. Thanks Joe. Appreciate it. Good luck this week. Thank you. Marty. Uh, yeah, I've got a defensive line question too. I was uh, obviously you guys expected uh, Drew Wiley was m more of a proven commodity, but wondered a little bit about Eli Huggins, what he's been able to do, and were you surprised at all at at the level he's been able to play? We knew in the spring that for us to to be successful, that we were going to have to get a lot out of Eli Huggins and a lot out of Jalen Pickle. Um, you know, Drew Wiley had played in games. He certainly wasn't playing at the level that he's played at this year. Uh, he, he was, a, he was a, a good player last year, a solid player. I think right now he's playing at a level. I don't know that I would trade him for any other inside guy in the league. Um, but, um, you know, Eli Huggins didn't have a lot of snaps under his belt. Jalen Pickle didn't have snaps under his belt. And um, for those guys to, to take that role, and, and let's face it, we're a developmental program. We're going to run into that situation in every, you know, in different positions each year, you know, when you graduate guys, it's gotta be the next guy up. We're not, we're not the type of place that's going to go out and just look for some guy that fell out of Clemson or somewhere, uh, you know, and, and, and that's going to be the, the process moving forward at all positions. And so um, I'm just, I'm just impressed with how those guys go about their business every day, how much they've embraced their role and didn't shy away from it either. They knew they had to be the guy and they stepped up and, and they were the guy. John? Yeah, Joe, we've, we've heard from Chris over the last couple of weeks about just how much COVID has, has affected you guys defensively right now. How, how much of an issue has that been for you? Well, it's uh, it's been a challenge. I mean, uh, you know, where it's affected us a lot, uh, as I'm sure you know, is, is the young guys and, and the scout teams. And so, you know, when you're, when you're playing a, a group that's got a talented trio of tight ends and, and you're using – defensive linemen as those guys in some instances and you're using uh, kickers as receivers in some instances it's just something that you've got to work through but that's that's what it is it's 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 the pictures that are important to us and we're still doing a, a number of work uh, good on good as we say uh, against our our starting offense so that we can get some speed and some pictures that we might not be getting uh, from some of those other guys does the situation to you, is it reminiscent at all of what you were facing going into the Oklahoma game with the, the personnel issues you had there? Yeah. And, and you, you know, you just, you just keep rolling. I mean, there's nothing you can sit and cry over it, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, I'm sure we're not the only team in the country that's facing that. And so we got to just keep plugging, away, plugging away. Appreciate it, Joe. Thanks. Derek. Yeah, Coach, uh, I asked this to kind of get find out how a player goes from, you know, not seeing the field a whole lot to one of the one of the better ones this year, and it's Echo Boy Doe. So what was kind of keeping him off the field before now, and how has he kind of rectified that issue to be as good as he's been? 
You know, uh, Echo was just, um, I, I would say, probably a little bit of a victim of, we had decent depth at that position, and he just didn't see pictures real well. And, and Echo, to me, is a guy that, he's a smart football player, but he's a guy that's a rep guy and a guy that needs to see things over and over again. And when you don't get that, you don't get consistency uh, from his play because you don't really know what he knows, if that makes any sense at all. And, and he just, you know, the, when he kind of got thrust into that role and he was getting all the pictures, boy, he got so much better so quickly. And, um, you know, he's just kind of taken off from there. And I think the more he plays, the more comfortable he gets. You know, he's still, and, and he would tell you the same, I think he's still a work in progress. Uh, he's going to be a better player in a year um, just because of what he's going to be able to do with his body and, and whatnot. But I think the confidence that he's gotten over the last six or seven weeks from his play is, is, is speaking volumes every, every Saturday out there. So, Secret, there's been a little bit of attrition lately from, from your guys' roster. And Coach Clement said, you know, you can kind of use Echo Boydo as that example that your time could still come. But is it also – kind of teach you guys a little bit that there's, there could be more guys that are ready to contribute if they can get their, their time? You know, and that's, that's what we've been trying to emphasize here for the last five or six weeks is we've been trying to do a lot of uh, younger guys against younger guys in our program. You know, we've been taking time out so that we can get a look at everybody and so that everybody is getting those chances. And, um, and it's, it, it has. It's, you know, I don't know if there's guys that are necessarily we, we're finding that are ready right now, but we're finding guys that maybe we can count on in a year and can get put into that same situation that maybe an Eli Huggins was in uh, heading into this year or a Jalen Pickle uh, that, you know, hey, next year you might have to play a significant role. And, and you know, can we count on you to do that? And, and we're, we're pleased with what we're seeing out there. But, you know, listen, as far as the attrition goes, you know, this program isn't for everybody. You know, uh, we're going to do things uh, a certain way to try to achieve a certain standard, and not everybody's able to, to adhere to that standard, and that's just what it is. And lastly, I know – Everyone knows this is a real challenging year for college student athletes. They're, they're being asked and uh, you know, required to do things that aren't normal. But how challenging is it as a coach? Is this one of the more challenging years of your career? Probably the most challenging year. And I think one of the, one of the challenges that, that probably doesn't get talked enough about is, you know, it isn't dealing with the scout team or, or the numbers. or anything. It's the fact that our time is so limited and has been so limited in the off season with ability to build relationships with our players and just being able to be around those guys uh, as much as we normally would be. And uh, the fact that, you know, there's restrictions on numbers of people that are allowed in the building or the fact that there's people, you know, restrictions on numbers of people that are allowed in a meeting room. Um, shoot, we haven't even had a team meeting where everybody's been in the same room uh, this year. So that, that's been the most challenging part. And that's, that's why a lot of us get into coaching is to build those relationships. And, um, you know, the COVID's putting a, a damper on that a little bit. And I'm excited to, uh, for the future. Hopefully we can get past that. Appreciate that, Coach. Thanks. Last one here, Ryan. Hey, Joe. How you doing today? Great. Hey, I got a few questions for you, actually. So I hope you'll be patient with me. Uh, okay, my first one just is, and I know it seems – almost like we ask you this every week about the quarterback you're facing, but with Brock Purdy specifically, what kind of matchup problems does he present? Um, again, something that doesn't get talked enough about, about him is how he's able to extend plays. Uh, he's obviously got good arm talent. He knows where to put the ball. He's got great command of what they're doing offensively. Very smart football player. That's evident on tape. The, the, the thing that really helps him out is, is how he's able to get out of the pocket, how elusive he is, and how dangerous he is when he gets loose. And uh, that, that's something that really continues to, to scare me and keep me up at night for the last couple of weeks is just the fact that uh, he can make things happen when sometimes you've, you've played the play really well. You know, we might have the initial cover down fantastic, uh, fantastically played, but, you know, if he buys himself another couple of seconds and somebody gets loose down the sideline, that's how explosive plays happen. We just got to find a way to keep him in there. Is he similar to any, anybody else you guys have faced this year? Boy, a lot of great quarterbacks in the Big 12. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, a guy like Max Dugan comes to mind a little bit. Um, you know, a guy that he really reminds me of that, uh, that we're pretty familiar with is Skyler Thompson, you know, uh, throughout spring practice. And just his mobility and some of the things that Skyler does that maybe doesn't, he doesn't get enough credit for. I think Brock Purdy's kind of in that same boat. And then specifically, you know, that they, uh, they have a really great, 
tight end room. How different is that to face kind of when you're so used to usually having to line up against receivers, the fact that they, they throw three tight out three tight ends out on the field pretty regularly. And, and the fact that they use them, they don't just use them as tight ends. They're going to split them out. They're going to put them in the backfield. They're going to do different things with them. And, and they're all talented in, in those spots. I mean, they can be out there and be as talented as most of the receivers in the league. Uh, they can be in the backfield and, and be kicking out run plays as physical as, as any fullback in the league. And so are there fullbacks in the Big 12? I'm, I'm, uh, but uh, – uh, but they're, they're just uh, – their skill sets are so are sort of diverse and so good. Um, you know, fortunately for us, and the, and the one saving grace is, again, that's something that we, we do see a lot in the spring. Um, we do see a lot of that in fall camp, and, and we've dealt with that a little bit. So, uh, hopefully our, our stuff holds up. And, and I was going to ask, I mean, does, does it help you guys having a guy like Briley to go against some practice and some of the other tight ends that you've got? So, at least it gives you more of like a – like you like to say, pictures of what – Iowa State might throw at you. Fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's really difficult. And I don't know how some of these teams do it that don't, that don't see these types of things all the time to just get that stuff in a week or, or in this case, two weeks. It just doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. I mean, I think our guys have a little degree of comfort because we see a lot of those things uh, frequently.